It's a really nice unit that we have here, a uh, pump filter cart. It includes a small gear pump. It's got two filters on there. Uh, one is uh, filters water, one filters uh, solids or particulates. Uh, they're obviously removable. You don't need to use the water. If you just want to use two particulates, you can do that as well. Uh, it runs on 120 volt single phase. It just plugs right into an outlet on the wall. Um, the nice thing about it is, as we're pumping the transfer and the fluid from the storage tote into the loop, we're actually running it through filters. A couple of points on the filling process. We want to pick a low point when we're filling this. So in this case, we're just doing the hot functional test on our system. When it cross over, we select one of our two low point drains, fill drain locations here. In the field, the hot oil system might be up on a mezzanine and you've got a press or a jacketed vessel that sits down on the first floor. So ideally, if you want to pick a low point to fill, if you can get access, if you can get oil and a pump down there, it would be best to take advantage of that low point fill port to fill the process. It doesn't have to be on the hot oil system. Uh, again, some of those places are pretty tight. You may not be able to get a drum or a tote or something down there. But try to pick a low point. It helps push the air out through the vents um, as we're adding the oil to the loop. When we start to pump the fluid into the loop, if it's a very small loop, one person could probably easily do that. You want to keep an eye on all of your piping to, uh, it's a, probably the first time that um, you're going to be introducing a liquid into the pipe if it's a new application or a new install. So look for any potential leaks, even though you may have pressure tested the piping in advance. Uh, if you have multiple high point vents, you probably want to stage somebody at every vent and uh, establish good communication so when one guy is pumping they know that um, there's, we're introducing oil into the loop. If you have goosenecks on your vents, a really good practice um, just to confirm that oil is, you've got an open path, is to put your hand on the, on, on the, uh, the gooseneck port and if you, if you hold it there to seal it and you release it, you'll feel a puff of air come out. That's basically the oil displacing the air, which would be a good sign. So two things we're looking at, um, right now we know that we're just filling this loop so we don't need to be concerned about vents out there, but we want to look for a level in the expansion tank and we want to watch and determine where our level switch is tripping. <clears throat> One of the things you want to confirm um, during the installation are on the sight gauge that your, your valves are open. Um, it's happened a number of times, it only happened once to you, but if they're closed, you're going to assume there's no level in the tank until you overfill it and oil comes out your vent tube. So, so the level light went out. We should be seeing oil in the sight gauge. It comes up through here. Uh, ideally, you want to be around 25% capacity at ambient temperature. Sometimes on the larger loops, on the initial fill, we'll go a little bit higher because we know we're going to displace a fair amount of air and uh, it'll just prevent us from having to add oil uh, multiple times. What I'd recommend though is on the initial startup here, leave your pump connected because in most cases as we do evacuate air, you're going to see the level drop and you may have to add oil and it's real convenient just to open a valve and turn your pump on to add some more oil then have to hook everything back up. So leave the pump connected until you're satisfied that all the air has been evacuated and uh, you're re ready to start applying some heat to the fluid. So at this point, this is a pretty good starting level for our test here. Yes, and uh, you can see we on our tool pieces here, we have vents. And you probably can't hear it, but there's actually, you can hear air coming out right now. And we're just gonna do this until now we have fluid. Nice steady stream, and we'll do this over here too. Like John said, the more have, the easier your startup is going to go. And there we are. So now we'll shut this. Uh, we're full. I'm not going to shut this the whole way, but I am going to shut it like 90% until we start running. When we're done with the test, 
we're gonna use the filter cart to draw the oil out. And you can do that with the same with your process. All you gotta do is flip the two hoses um, and the unit runs the same way, only instead of drawing the oil out of the tote, we're gonna be drawing the oil out of the system and pumping it back into the tote. Uh, really nice unit. We have these for sale. Um, contact our aftermarkets department. They'd be glad to talk to you about it. Uh, they're very useful if your plant has multiple hot oil systems, ideally with the same fluids. You could use this, it's on a dolly, so you could take it from place to place, place it in your stores uh, for storage until you need it. We also have these available for rent, uh, I believe it's on a weekly basis.